Showbiz and Lee Drew on 97.7 FM. Steve Wiley is a pop icon here in Australia. Having started out in 1964, coupled with TV, pop shows in the 1960s and 70s, Ross D. Wiley is as active today and as popular as what he was back then. He tours regularly, great shows coming up. He's in with his mates, Normie Rowe and Johnny Young, very, very soon, and he's online to have a chat to us right now. Ross, nice to have you in the program. How are you? Good afternoon. After that build-up, mate, I'm going to run a marathon. Oh, good on you. OK, I'll send you the bill later. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Nice to catch up with you, Ross. Gee, what a what a career you've had, mate. 1964, the first one of those. You, you had a band and, as a youngster, didn't you? Uh, oh, yes. My first band was uh, a band called the Kodiaks, named mm. after the, for God knows why, after the Kodiak Bear. <laughs> oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, they were, oh, they were, we did, the, we did a bit of um, Shadows and Cliff Richards and, um, a lot of shadow stuff because one our original guitarist Mike, he was brilliant at it. He, I mean, the first time I ever heard an echolette was when he played, when he dragged it out of the cupboard. Really, it was, it was fantastic stuff. Yeah, and especially, especially up in Brisbane on the down the Gold Coast and up the Sunshine Coast as it was in those days, and just a developing uh, music industry as it was back in sixty. Mm. Uh, 65, 66, you know, it was just a wonderful time to be there. Because you were, you were born in Brisbane, then you moved down to Melbourne, didn't you? And I think, if my memory is correct, you went back to Brisbane at some time too, didn't you? No. Just stayed no, here? I, yeah. No, I stayed here. Um, yeah, you, in those days, I mean, you could start in Brisbane now and finish in Brisbane. Yeah. Uh, because because of the, uh, the communications and the flights and so forth around Australia and the world. You could make, you know, your Gold Coast or, or or the North Coast your home base, but back then you couldn't. You had to get out of Brisbane um, or Adelaide or Perth and get into Sydney or Melbourne. Yeah, that's yeah. where it was happening. That's where the the opportunities were. And um, I was lucky enough in '66 to be on tour with um, Rowie '67, and uh, his then manager David Joseph who uh, some people, a lot of people in the industry will remember, he uh, he saw me work on, on stage a couple of times and like the man with a big cigar after one show, he said, I might have something for you. It was in Brisbane, actually, the last show of the tour. And uh, the same week that I got engaged to my now wife of nearly 50 years, Eileen, um, uh, that uh, he rang me a few weeks later and offered me a job to come down to Melbourne. There you are. And uh, basically, I refused it because it was it was four hours live to air, unrehearsed. Get your own way to Melbourne, find your own accommodation. Um, uh, basically, type up your own auto queue, and um, and fifty dollars a week. Oh, what? Oh, goodness! <laughs> and I was making one hundred and twenty, one hundred and ten on a regular basis doing the circuit with the band mm. and and a solo act in Brisbane. Um, I said no to him. Yeah. So finally, I, finally, I gave in and talked to my fiance, my wife, and I said, "Listen, I'll go down for twelve weeks, thirteen-week contract. That's all they've got. If it doesn't work, I'll be home." Yeah. And here I, here I am, uh, fifty odd years later. And you're still here. Yeah. I'm still here, mate. Yeah. Well, well, you signed with the, the Sunshine label, but then uh, and you had uh, short skirts with them, I think, and then you, you went to festival records, didn't you? That's that's where Smile came out, wasn't it? Nineteen sixty-eight. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, festival, festival um, were the, was the main uh, record company for Sunshine Records. Mm. So Sunshine Records was basically Ivan Damon based on the Gold Coast, on the on a uh, Cloudland uh, in Brisbane, and uh, that's where we recorded. I went down to Sydney uh, actually with the Escorts um, in sixty six, sixty seven, and recorded stuff like the. Uh, 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 Short skirts and 
uh, last day in town, all of that sort of stuff came out of out of, fe- out of festival in Sydney. Yeah. Tell us about Uptight because that came along in what 1969, wasn't it? No, 67. 67, was it? The start of the yeah, year? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, 67. And it went, went right through, and uh, yeah. So it lasted yeah. quite a while, though, didn't it, after that uh, oh, initial... Yeah, we did, well, we did four years of it. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Four, four years, that, um, uh, and it was not just four hours. on the on Every Saturday morning, it used to be uh, on Friday sometimes and mm. Thursday for little grabs as well. So That was on the O10 network, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, which the old was, it wasn't. It was certainly ATVO in those days. Yes, so yes. There was no ten attached to it at all. No, that yeah. was in the in the later times in the seventies, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Once again, um, none of the crew had ever done a four hour live to wear unrehearsed TV show, and they were reluctant. Cameramen, directors, producers, audio operators, boom swingers, whatever it might have been, they're going, "How the heck can we do four hours?" Gee. And about an hour after the roster came out on the first Saturday, the roster was full to do that show. Go on. Yeah, and they were reluctant to do it first. It was so much fun. It and was you, so much fun. And you went on to Happening 72, didn't you? Yeah, well, it changed in 1970 to Happening mm. 70, 71. Yeah. And that's when she's just basically petered out. It, it, we didn't keep up with the, with the move at the time, in my opinion. We, the show got tired, I got tired. Um, and especially it wasn't live then, it was recorded. Was it? Yeah, and and that's a shame because you, you, you don't have the same buzz that you do when that red light goes on in the camera and you have to go, then you go, you can... Like, I remember so many occasions that the camera swung around to me if there was a problem, if the band wasn't set up <laughs> or if the tape machine failed or yeah. then, oh, the last resort or the only resort was to... Okay, Q Ross. Go to the host. Uh, yeah. Yes. You're there. Yes. Yeah. And you've got to do something, but you can't have blank air, can you? No, exactly right. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that that happens in radio still in mm. some cases, which is probably more of a technical hitch than anything else. But mm. um, back then, as I say, as you know, mate, you know, when the red light's on... Yep. You have to talk. You have to... You're away. Yep. <laughs> you're the actor. You're there. Well, you've you, got to go and you, do it. You're, you, you can talk. You can sit there in a pair of jocks if you like, but when you're doing telly, it's a bit harder. Yeah, exactly right. Yes. <laughs> With your TV shows, Uptight and Happening 70, because you, you were a forerunner to all of this, and you even had Molly Meldrum on your program, didn't you? He was a, a guest reporter or something, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yes, yeah. he was a, he was a um, general interview uh, type um, um, regular uh, and a, an album reviewer and um, uh, movies. Um, totally unorganised, totally... Um, you know, uh, anything could happen mm. with Molly, and it still did in Countdown days. You know, like um, he was he, he was very unpredictable. <laughs> Probably <laughs> still is. Put, oh, absolutely, you know, <laughs> and that's why people loved him. I think that, he, that's he, right. He went across to Countdown with some experience in live television. Yes, I think when they threw in the hosting role, he probably. Um, had second thoughts about it, but he would have gone in there young how as usual yeah, yeah. and had a go, you yeah. know. Great, great times, great days. Um, yeah. Tell me about your shows now. Now, you're at the Country Club at Mulgrave. Now, I believe that's a sellout for the 30th, 31st of March. Yeah. That, that's gone, but you're heading now to Mornington, aren't you? Yeah, Mornington Peninsula at the um, community theatre there, Mornington Community Theatre, um, which is a fairly new venue to people and not probably recognised yet as a, a, you know, a performing, it's certainly not an art centre, but it's, it's um, like, see, it's, a, it's a good room. And right. There's plenty of parking, there's plenty of, plenty of seats, tables, um, and we've got uh, a licence for the night, so the oldies can, oldies, shouldn't say that, but, um, <laughs> well, I'm old, I'm 70, I'm 73 this year, so... And still doing it, mate. That, that's what it is, isn't it? That's, that, you're, have, you're out yeah. there and still doing it. It's something you really love, Ross. I had a, ch- I had a chat with the girls at the desk at Mulgrave Country Club and I, they said we've had two, one of them said we've had two uh, questions as to whether it, the show is a tribute show. Oh. As in... Tribute to you. Really still alive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're there with Normie Rowe and Johnny Young, aren't you? Normie just turned 70. Yeah. Rowie's Rowie, uh, Norm, Norm's just turned 70. Youngie's 
probably not 70 just yet. He might be close. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going on 70, only 73. I'm 72. Um, so, yeah, there's a bit of age there. But, my God, when when both John and Youngie get on stage, um, John and Rowie, rather, it's dynamic stuff. Is it really? really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, and I'm, I'm sure people sit in the audience. When we do the go show, um, the amount of people that sit there and go, holy <laughs> he can still hit that note, or yeah. he can still sing. Yes, he might got a bit weight on him that lost a few bits of the ball, but apart from that, mate, he's you it's know pretty all right. Well. Yeah. yeah, good on you. Well, good. Got a, the Playboys are the backing band. Um, you, you're talking. That, that's the gig. You're talking about the old days there, and look, I love the old days too, and I'm all with you, but um, there's a story about you uh, operating that uh, record shop in High Street, Bayswater. Yeah. And you had uh, arch rivals, wasn't it? Arch rivals? Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For that. And uh, what, the fans would come in and look at the uh, the records, and, and I was reading one day about you, you'd sit back and watch these young kids coming in. I wonder what they think of us these days. Yeah. <laughs> did, you uh, like, did you like having the shop? I did. I, I I always like to be around people. I'm yes. Not, I'm not a. Uh, I, I don't mind my own company, but I do like being around other people, especially bands and singing and, and singing and touring and talking crap as you do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I did. I liked the shop. The shop was. It lasted for seven years. I had two partners. They all disappeared, yeah. wanting wanting money, and um, Arlene and I kept it going and. Yeah, we didn't do too bad at it, but we didn't lose money anyway. Good on you, mate. That, that's that's a lot of fun. So you're at the Community Theatre at Mornington. What's the date of that, Ross? That's on uh, April Fool's Day. Oh, the 1st. Okay. Saturday the 1st of April, yeah. yeah. All right. So and start, it's, um, as I say, it's, it, it, it's uh, a big venue. It's a, uh, but there's plenty of room to move, park, have a drink, have a, have a laugh, food vans there, so there's... Um, you know, a bit of food around the place. We're not catering for it, but it's food banned. You go and grab it yourself. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. And uh, uh, as I say, it, it's um, it'll be a it'll be a first for the peninsula, I think, in terms of a big show like Rowie and Young, and just throwing myself as well. Oh, you, you're as big as they are. No, you, you you're <laughs> all good together, mate. No, don't don't well, uh, don't knock that's, yourself down. No, no, that's true. But I don't work nearly as much as. As either, well, especially Rowie. Rowie's working twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah. Little, um, I, I must, I must get hold of Norman, and have him on the program too, and have a chat yeah. with him. Mm, I might yeah. set that up through you one day. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be good, mate. It's great to catch you. Uh, how can we book for the show down at Mornington? Is there a okay. number or, or go there online? Is, it, it's on. Well, it's try booking. Right. Try booking my yep. word dot com forward slash two double five six zero seven six zero seven. Got it. Yeah. All right. Try booking. Right, booking. dot com forward slash two double five six zero seven. Exactly. Yeah, Good. And it's April Fool's Day, so you're not going to trick us. You are going to be there, aren't you? Oh yes, mate. Yes, yes. <laughs> April um, Fool's Day. You know, right. like, um, you know we've commi we're committed to the to the Peninsula Council, uh, to Mornington Council. We're Wonderful. committed to the band, the boys. Uh, we can't. So no April Fool's joke. You're going to be no, there. We'll, we'll be there, <laughs> yeah, mate. Good on you, pal. Ross, it's lovely to catch up with you, mate. I've followed your career for many, many years, of course, and being a broadcaster and a DJ over the time that you were producing records. Remember playing many, many, many of yours. Have a great weekend, pal. Lovely to catch up with you, and we must do it again sometime. Thanks for your time, buddy. Take care, mate. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Look at that. There he goes. There goes the funny man